Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo tutorial about making some buttons like this sort of image here or a sphere like this sort of image here from a texture. Now as a little bit of background what happened was it was directed to these free textures well most of them are free not all of them are free um, on share textures I will add a link to this page um, in the description for the video and I've downloaded a few of them but it was the marble ones that was mainly the ones that were being advertised and sets one no yeah sets one and three are for free and sets two four and five are ones you have to pay for but what if I click on number three here what intrigued me about all these images was that the spheres that he managed to get using these textures and I wanted to sort of work out how he managed to sort of make these spheres I'm guessing he probably did this in Photoshop um, so I sort of had to work out my own way of doing this so this is basically what this video is about and in the process of trying to work out how to sort of do this sphere look I sort of also sort of came across making those buttons so this is the sort of history behind this now the other two things I want to credit are I'm only going to use one of these but there's this um, these are from clean PNG and it's just the sort of sheen and glow that I want to add to the spheres at the end and there's another one here and I, I think I'm going to be using this one but I will link both of those in the description to this video so that is basically the history behind this so we will come back to Affinity Photo and this is another one of my this first version had one of those bubbles on top and this one had the other one so uh, I do think they are sort of necessary in the sense it helps gives you that sheen and it does help sort of give the appearance of it being a sphere although it's only a flat image now you could possibly make this bubble effect yourself I personally don't know how to do that there may be videos out there be it Photoshop ones or Affinity Photo ones that help describe how to do that part but that last part I'm sort of cheating by using the PNG overlays and one other option you could use this for if you don't want to use the texture is you could add a picture inside and try and make it into a sphere now this image I got off of Pixabay just as a practice and you could sort of add no, something on the top here and make it into a sort of crisp, Christmas bauble that you might add to a Christmas tree image and I'm not 100% certain what you'd use all of these for it's just more practice more than anything else and I'll leave it up to you whether how you want to use them if you want to use them or just want to practice what Affinity Photo can do so that is enough of me waffling I'm sorry it's gone on a bit long I will just stop this and reset things and I'll be back okay I have reset all the what I need from Affinity Photo and I've opened up one of the marble textures this came from the marble set number one and I'm going to do the button first of all and first thing I'm going to use is the elliptical marquee tool it is in this place where it's normally on the rectangular marquee tool by default I think but I'm going to be using the elliptical one and I'm going to hold down the shift key while I drag out this circle just so I get a nice round circle uh, sort of not an ellipse shape and I also put a tick into anti-alias to give us a nice smoother edge so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up as close as I dare sort of to the top of this texture hold down the shift key and click and drag out a circle so as, as close as I can get to the bottom edge without losing too much it's pretty here let go 
and I can now move this selection around to find a bit of texture that is interesting I mean because over here they'll be next to nothing for me to sort of make it interesting so I'm going to come over to about there so I've got a bit of interest and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, do, uh, a layer from this selection you can sort of do that from the menus at the top here but it's just as easy to press Control and J or Command on J on a Mac and if I turn off that bottom layer because we don't need that there we have the selection so I can now press Control and D to deselect and then I will come to the move tool and just move this into pretty much the center there we go that's the center so we now have a sort of nice looking texture to work from and what I will do is I will duplicate that again you don't need to be doing this unless you're going to make a sphere and a button um, I will keep I'm going to turn that first one off and I'll use that later when I come to do the spheres so working on this layer to start making the button so we have the selection on the layer that we need so I'm now going to add some effects to this layer and to do that you just need to click on the FX icon that is down here and it will open up the layer effects panel just move this out the way and I'm going to sort of set it up with some basic settings which I've done for all my other practice runs and then go back and tinker to suit the t you know my taste and the, te the texture because I found that obviously different textures will look better with different settings so the first one I'm going to set up is beveling boss so I'll put a tick into beveling boss click on the word to bring up the options now the type of bevel that I want is outer and the radius I'm going to make 35 and soften I'm going to make 10% and then I'm going to come to 3D put a tick into 3D click on the word 3D to get the options and I'm going to push the radius right up to 100% and I'm going to leave the soften where it is now I'm going to change the azimuth and elevation and obviously depending on what you're going to do with this and you know, where you want the light source to come from you may want this in a different position but I'm going to put the azimuth at 109 and the elevation at 49 and diffuse and specular I'm, well, the specular is already on 50% so I'm going to put diffuse on 50% as well and shininess I'm going to leave on 80% so that is my basic setting up and then like I said different textures and what you want to do with those textures will probably need different settings so once I've got my basic button shape and the light roughly coming where I come from uh, where it's coming from I can now sort of tinker with those settings see whether I want that to be a little bit lighter if you want the light on this edge and the shadow on that edge to be a bit less you can lower the opacity and just tone those down a little bit maybe that's a bit too much I've lowered that down to about 75 percent and then it's just a case of finding what works for your particular taste and texture. I'm going to make this one a little bit brighter if 
I don't necessarily want to lose too much of the dark shapes there. I might also add a little bit of softening just to soften that edge. Just going around there. And I think that will do. Let me close that down. So that is for my taste. I quite like that one. I will leave that where it is. And what I, I would do then is I would get the crop tool and bring this in as close as you dare. Well, not dare, that's probably the wrong word. Um, and then double click in there to crop it to that size. And then export that as a PNG. Because if you deliver, um, export it as a PNG, you will keep the clear background. So you can use this on sort of maybe buttons for a web page or you know a badge you could add some text in there to make a badge out of it and something like that so I'm going to sort of reset these things back and then we will start on the sphere so that is the button done okay now we're going to come back to start making the sphere and the first steps of making the sphere is the same as making the button and sort of prove that all I've done is rolled back the history of what I did earlier back to the point where I duplicated that layer so I can now just delete that layer and we then just have the first version of that that I made at the beginning of the video so we're going on to making the sphere it's just a case of you know opening texture, drawing out the ellipse, and duplicating that selection. So, going on to making the sphere, then we're going to be using live filters on this, and the live filters you can access by this sort of hourglass icon down here, and you click on that and it will open up all the available live filters. You can get access these filters like from the filters menu, but if you use them, you've got no way of sort of going back and tinkering if you need to. So it's best to use live filters. And the first one we're going to use is lens distortion. So we have this here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop the this all the way down to minus 100 and as you can see it has reduced the size of that quite a lot but that is okay and then I will just close that as you can see that life filter is now a child of this background layer now the life filters we add after this sometimes they end up depending on where I, which layer I've got selected they will layer, end up either as ch child of this layer or they may be above this layer. Um, that doesn't really matter, it won't affect the overall effect. Um, just so you know that if you're the, the way you do it, it's not coming out exactly the same here as, as mine is. It's not to worry, it will all still work in the same way. So I'm going to come back to live filter. And I'm going to come up to spherical. As you can see, that has put that above these layers. I could drag it down and make it into that group, and it would make no difference really. So I'm going to move the intensity and the radius of this as far as they can go. And as you can see, that has increased the size and has already started to give us that spherical look and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to right click that layer and duplicate it so that will sort of increase the size again and increase the spherical look now you could possibly do this again let me try and see how it looks 
see I'm starting to lose some of that I mean that's not quite good actually but I find that the, the the more you sort of do this the less see it is breaking up slightly um, but I am zoomed in where we are 171 percent so let me put that control in zero Do I like how much I'm losing of the texture there? No, I'm lo I'm quite like. Although that is quite good, but I think I prefer having a little bit more of that black texture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that one. So whether you add one duplicate of the spherical layer or t three or you know whatever, I will leave it up to you and how you want this to look. I'm going to leave it at just the two live filters for, for yeah for my texture. So the next thing we're going to need is some lighting. Again, the lighting filter can be got from the filters menu, but I'm going to use the live filter version. And you may need to scroll down to see the bottom of this and its lighting filter, and you get this sort of triangular. Uh, pronged thing here in the middle which you can move around and then you have all the settings for it here now what this has done here it has added this lighting layer as a child of that sphere layer now this is one occasion where I do want this to be part of the group um, because it's going to affect the whole image sort of where it is. I, I only want it to affect the sphere. So I'm going to click and drag this down until there's a blue line come in under this background layer and it only comes sort of to the right hand edge of the icon like that. And I'll release that. So now you can see now it is only affecting the texture. And it's just a case of moving this around to get an effect you want. So you can open up the the prongs, be it the middle ones or the outside ones. Right. So again, this is all a case of trial and error, and what suits your taste and what suits your texture. So there's no sort of real definite options I can give you, because each texture may need a different setting. And also, what you're going to do with this may also need the light to be coming from a different direction. But having that light on will help enhance that spherical look. So once you've sort of got it roughly in the position you want, you can then adjust some of these settings. Now some of these settings like, um, I think it's inner cone, outer cone, will be just the same as if you moved the little dots. But others, like diffuse, will alter how bright or dark certain areas are. I think I want it sort of quite bright where the the main lights first hit in. Can I help it? I think it gives that spherical look much more believability, for want of a better phrase. So I've had a slight tinker with that. Let me just open these out slightly more. I don't want those edges to be quite so dark. Yes, I'm fairly happy with that. So I can close that down. Now I'm now going to add another live filter layer and this is going to be shadows and highlights which is Somewhere here, I'm sure it is. Oh, it's down here under lighting. 
and again that sort of attached itself under that group I think I can leave it there hopefully it's having some sort of effect maybe not I may need to move it out and make it maybe I just need to wait and give my computer a chance to catch up yes I think that's a bit better yes where it is at the moment uh, sort of in the group but outside not attached to the lighting filter right again it's a case of going to your personal tastes yes I quite like that one as it is so we have that where we want that now and so I'm going to, I'm going to highlight the very top layer I mean if yours are all still in the group it would be this layer but as I've got a couple of layers above the background it's going to be this sphere layer and I'm going to add a new pixel layer and to this I'm going to add a gradient and the gradient tool is this one here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the gradient in the direction of how I've got the light going so I'm going to be coming diagonally across the sphere so we select gradient tool and hold down the shift so I get a straight line do it about there I think now by default for some reason it should be white to black in my opinion but by default the gradient is white to grey but in this case it does actually work okay so I'm going to change the blend mode of this layer from normal now a lot of these from dark and down to darker color will work but I found that color burn works the best and it sort of helps enhance those darker areas in the texture but as you can see this is also affecting the background so again I've got to drag this layer down and put it in to that background group so it is only affecting the sphere and not the background so I can now have a little tinker with this and change the settings and move the center point and sort of alter the lighting accordingly no, I do think it's a bit too dark at the bottom edge. We we'll bring this down a bit, make it a bit lighter down there. All right. Yes, I'm happy with that. So I will click on that top layer again. So we are now at a point where you could sort of save it now as it is because you sort of do sort of have this sort of sphere looking object and the lighting is how I like it but I've, I personally think that to really sell that sphere look you do need that sort of shininess that I described at the beginning and let me open up this one here now you can see this particular one which I'm going to use it does have a blue tint to it so I will be sort of getting rid of that but you could leave it if you want so once I've got that I'm gonna copy this and then paste it in to the sphere that I'm working on come to the move tool and then it's just a case of centering this is pretty much where I want it I mean I will have to tinker with it slightly but I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm just going to enlarge this from the center 
and to get it as close as I can to the size of the sphere I'm working on and then just use the arrow keys to nudge it left and right up and down and so the only problem with increasing this because it is a PNG I think it will increase sort of the jagged edge so I wouldn't necessarily come too far outside of that shape maybe come in just a little bit and then like I said it's just a case of using the arrow keys to nudge it up and around to get it as best you can so I think that's not too bad and then it's a case of changing the blend mode of this um, sorry that's wrong one, blend mode is that one and finding a blend mode that works see multiply that's quite good again I think it's going to be within the darker multiply section but I'm not sure this section would be much used the overlay section might be okay but I do think that this darken to darker color section will probably give you the best options depending on what you are trying to do so I'm gonna I'm gonna go with multiply now what I do need to do is to sort of get rid of that blue tint so I will add a HSL adjustment and I will click and drag this down and make this a child of this bubble so it's only affecting that layer and I'm going to drop the saturation right the way down to get rid of that blue tint you could possibly tinker with the luminosity but I'm going to leave it as it is and again highlighting that layer you could tinker with the opacity to get a look that you want but I do think that that sort of extra glow helps give the appearance of it being spherical if I come off of that tool so you haven't got that there I might need to make this slightly bigger because I think you can see the edge a bit too much let me just center this again I have one last tinker let's come with the move tool just increase it a little bit and just move it to the left a bit yes. right I do still have a bit of an edge there let's try that again I'll try and increase it just a little bit more right now I'm sort of over overdoing this now I think right I'm going to leave that alone maybe not be a hundred percent perfect but you get the idea um, then like before it's just a case of cropping this to get rid of all that excess background that we don't need double click in it and then export as a PNG like before giving it a new name so you don't get things mixed up and that is the end of the tutorial hopefully you can find some use even if it's only for practice on what to do with affinity photo 
and thank you for watching and goodbye. Oh yeah, quickly before I go, I forgot to mention this. I have made a written tutorial which I did in Affinity Publisher and I will add a link to where you can download that in the description for this video. Um, this is the result of that written tutorial because that was the texture that I used in that particular uh, run through of the procedure and it will have both the button and the sphere options in that tutorial as well. So finally, thank you for watching. Goodbye.